Hi. Okay. So I just explained um, in the past two videos. I explained shear stress, which is um, kind of like when you've got two things. Um, we've got one block and another block, and they're both pushing um, at some offset like that. They're both pushing opposite directions, right? That was shear stress, and this is anchored, of course. That was shear stress. Axial stress was just if you have a block like like this was axial stress. If you have a block, you're trying to either compress it or stretch it, wire whatever. Uh, for both of those, you figured out that it's how hard you're pressing divided by the thickness of whatever it is um, that you're pressing against. The change in length or deformation was just what we said. It's the change in length. It's how much uh, whatever stress you apply. It's how much that changed um, the length of whatever the object was. The strain, we said, was a percent change. So if it starts out at um, 100 inches and it ends up at 101 inches, well, uh, that means that the change in length was 1, right? Uh, so 1 over the original length, 100, gives us 1 over 100, that's 0.01, or 1% change. Um, then we got to this equation, which was the elasticity modulus. This is often given to you in a table. The elasticity modulus is going to be equal to, um, basically, uh, how much stress you have to put something under, divided by the percent change that you want to deform it. Um, so so Remember, this is uh, in pounds per square inch divided by, this is unitless because it's just a percent, so the elasticity modulus is also in pounds per square inch, which you might see, see written as either uh, pounds per square inch, or just pounds per square inch. You'll see either PPSI or PSI, you'll see that a lot. Uh, that's the general unit. You may see like kilo PPSI or whatever like that, but hopefully that makes sense. So remember, the elasticity modulus kind of um, corresponds to um, how much stress you have to put something, um, so you have to, how much stress you have to put on something in order for it to um, change in length by uh, some percentage, right? Um, which means that since this is kind of part of the for the force and the area, if you know the cross-sectional area. Well, then you can use this to figure out how much force um, you can apply without this stretching by more than, say, 2%. So say this can only stretch up to 2%, you can figure out up to how much force it can withhold. Um, so hopefully all that made sense. Now I'm going to tackle uh, one or two of the problems in the Poe packet. Problems, uh, first I'm going to start with problem number one. Uh, it reads, an uniform... Okay. A uniform axial force of one ton is applied to an aluminum cube that is two inches on a side. So, first, let's draw it. Whoops. Sorry. Um, we're going to draw the cube. Cube. I'm going to make it a good cube. Because I want it to be a good diagram. Because I'm just that cool. You know, you know how it is. Okay, so um, we're gonna have this kind of shaded in. We're gonna have that kind of shaded in. Ooh, look at that attention to detail. Yay, Miss G actually taught me something. It's shading. Okay. Um, so actually, here let me erase this stuff, right? Because we can't see that because it's behind the block. Aha! I win. I beat you. You lose. Go back to Russia. Not really. Anyway. Okay. So, um, here's our block, right? And, um, it's being pushed on with a downward force of, I think it said, one ton, which is, uh, we're gonna write it in the form of 2,000 pounds. Right? 2,000 pounds. I'm not gonna keep units for the whole thing, but, uh, that's 2,000 pounds. Uh, and it said that the height is two inches, right? The height is two inches. Uh, so that's the height of the cube. Remember, it's, it's going to be two inches on all sides, right? Because it's a cube. It's the same on all sides. Um, so the first thing that, I, that it asks is, what axial stress does the cube experience? And uh, I probably should have saved my equations that I had written out, but we really don't, uh, we really don't need them. Remember, what, what was the axial stress? Um, well, it's how hard you're pressing, right? 
but it's divided by uh, how thick the object is that you're pressing on. The, the girth, if you will. <laughs> um, so what's the force? Here the force is uh, 2,000. And what's the area? Well, um, what you want to look at is the cross section of this, so uh, it's, it's actually like the area of one of these squares in this case. Th that would be one cross section. If you cut this cube in half and looked at your cut, you'd, look, you'd be looking at a square. So what's the area of this square? Well, it's 2 times 2. That's 4, right? So that's 4. So 2,000. So F over A. Oh, that's convenient. F over A. F over A equals 2,000 over 4, and that's equal to 500. Type it into your calculator if you don't believe me. 2,000 over 4 is 500. That was part A. What axial stress does the cube experience? 500. This right here. So we're going to write that this, in this case, equals 500, because we actually will need that in the next question. So if I went too fast, um, let me know, and I'll probably end up making another video, because I'll feel guilty. Um, hopefully that made sense, though. Okay, the modulus of elasticity. So here they're telling us that E is equal to... Actually, let me just type, write this out. Um, they're, going, they're telling us that E, the modulus of elasticity, not epsilon. It's E, English E. That's, mo that's the modulus of elasticity of aluminum. We don't even really need to know that it's aluminum. All we need to know is the uh, elasticity modulus of elasticity. The modulus of elasticity, they say, is 10 times 10 uh, power 6. Um, so it, then they ask, what is the expected strain of the cube? So what, was the, what is the expected strain? What is the expected strain? Well, here, you should be able to kind of get this pretty quickly if you can remember what the uh, modulus of elasticity is equal to. But first let's write out what this, uh, um, let's just write this all out even though it's ugly. There's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 extra zeros. Yuck. That's stupid and ugly. Okay. Um, so what is the expected strain of the cube? Do, 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 do. Okay. Um, make sure I got this right. Uh, straight modulus is equal to sigma. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I might be getting a wrong answer here. Let me pause this. Okay, sorry. I was, uh, I was kind of looking at, um, the answer that I got in my actual packet, and... I was like, huh, that doesn't make sense with where I'm going with the video. And it turns out I was wrong before, I'm right with the video. So, you guys are good. Um, okay, so here we have our gigantonormungus number. It's, that's, uh, 10 million. Remember, this is in pounds per square inch. That's just what the elasticity module is. Modulus is, but that's pounds per square inch. Um, and what is E equal to? Besides MC squared, because we're going to ignore that identity for now. It's a different E. It's sigma over epsilon, right? That's just our definition of the elastic modulus, stress over strain, right? So we know uh, the stress, and we know the elastic modulus. So let's plug that crap in. Okay, now I'm going to type it out. So 10, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 is equal to, right, that's just the elastic modulus, is equal to, uh, well, sigma, that's 500. 100 over over what? Over E. Over that, that weird sigma E. Um, so that I'm going to write in because I don't want to use any kind of misleading English letter. So that over E. Um, so now let's multiply both sides by E. Or rather by epsilon and this cancels out. Right? So now we have 10 million epsilon equals 500. Uh, so what do we do next? Well, we divide both sides by that 10,000. So we're going to take this 10,000 and we're going to divide both sides by it. Sorry, that looks kind of crappy, but ah, ugly, but it works. So here it cancels out, right? 
And here we get 500 over 10 million. Um, oh wait, my answer was right. Okay. So, I got the right answer both ways. That works. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, okay. So then we get 500 divided by 10 million. Hopefully I didn't miss any zeros there. And we get 0 0.00005. So we get that equal to 0 0.0... Whoa, whoa line tool. Mind, mind blown. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and that is the uh, expected strain, right? Uh, does, that, uh, does that make sense to uh, everyone watching? Right, because we uh, we just we know that the elasticity modulus is stress over strain, and we took the uh, we basically took the stress and divided it by the elasticity modulus, and that gave us the strain. So let me make this smaller, but um, uh, our e our uh, strain right here is point zero 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 five, um, or if you were to make it a percentage, it would still be point point zero zero five percent. So it's not a big strain. Um, so if you, I mean, because if you've got an aluminum cube, two inches on each side, um, and you're putting one, uh, a four a ton of force onto it, like lit like literally a ton, as in 2,000 pounds of force onto it, um, it's only going to compress whatever 0.005% of its length is. So, aluminum is, uh, it's pretty tough stuff. It doesn't seem like it, but, uh, it's tough stuff, and a lot, a lot, most metal is. I'm actually wondering if I had my last problem wrong. Eh, nah, I probably didn't. I don't think I did. I don't think I did, now that I think about it. Okay, so let me get back to my discussion. Um, the third part, part C. Assume that the maximum shear stress uh, that the aluminum could withstand is given in the table on slide two. So remember shear stress, and by think shear, um, remember this tau. It's kind of like this is being kind of sheared downwards. Uh, that's how I think about it because it's like that T with the bend to it. Uh, that tau is equal to the force over the area, and they're saying that that max, that they're saying that that max is equal to, according to this table, it's equal to uh, 11, and that's um, kilopounds per square inch. So, uh, that's kilopounds per square inch, so 11, and if that's kilopounds, well we can just make that 11,000 pounds per square inch, PSI. So, 11 uh, kilopounds is the same as 11,000 pounds. If you don't believe me, try some dimensional analysis and check that for me, but I'm pretty s confident that it's correct. Um, so what is the maximum shear force that could be applied to the cube? Um, so basically, what's the maximum value that F could be? Okay, well, we know the area, right? Uh, right away, we said that the area was equal to four square inches, right? Because it's just that that two that number two squared. Um, so that's the area, and uh, we know that the force divided by the area cannot be bigger than this. So here we don't have to use if I uh, if I forgot this right, we don't have to use any of this crap. All we need to know is that the tau is equal to the force over the area, and that's equal to, according to what that chart said, 11,000, and that's in PSI, pounds per square inch. We know area, this is 4. So guess what? F equals, well let's multiply everything by 4. I'll make this 4 times. Easy stuff. The 4's cancel out, and you get F is equal to 44,000. Again, the math is incredibly easy. The math is some of the most straightforward stuff that you've seen since before you started physics or po. It's really clear math, but it uh, it's just a lot of weird symbols and ugliness. So as long as you understand this, you should be good, because the other two problems are identical to that, practically. Um, but um, hopefully that helped. Uh, if not, let me know, because I want to get the feedback. But um, 
I've, I think I've taught everything in physics and Poe, except I'm going to be taking power soon, because we're covering that, like, tomorrow or something, or Friday. Um, so I'll be teaching that soon. So that'll be my next bid, so uh, I'll see you then.